Hi guys, Aaron Dorr here with the Missouri Firearms Coalition. The August 2nd primary is almost here, and we're being asked by a lot of our members in Senate District number 22, who is the pro-gun candidate? Who says they're pro-gun? But alongside of that, you're also asking us, how do we know who we can trust anymore? You know, we just saw Roy Blunt, who always says he's pro-gun, vote with the radical left for a massive gun control bill in Washington, D.C. So going forward, how do we know as gun owners who is telling the truth and who's just trying to get our support at election time? It's a great question to ask. We're going to answer that question in this video today. Again, as district number 22, it's the north part of Jefferson County, and it's an open seat race right now featuring a bunch of different candidates. We're going to focus today on the top three candidates in this race based on polling data and our own observations and tell you guys where they stand on guns and how you can decide who's telling the truth and who's not. I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be a different video for us. Most of the time in our videos, one candidate has surveyed 100% and one candidate will not survey. Or one candidate has a pro-gun history and one candidate voted against your gun rights in Jeff City. We have a unique situation here. All three candidates have surveyed with the Missouri Firearms Coalition. And while it'd be easy to simply dismiss this race and say there's no real reportable differences, in an era where we don't trust anybody anymore, we're always digging deeper. And we have candidates who all survey the same. Our question is, how do we know who we can trust so we can tell you guys who you can trust when it comes to the Second Amendment? As you're about to see, there are things we look at besides the survey to figure out who's believable and who might be simply trying to play gun owners at election time. So we're going to break this down for you right now. First up is Representative Dan Shaw. Dan's been in the State House for a number of years now, and Dan surveyed with us Number one, I'm going to phrase that you know, right off the bat. Dan Shaw did survey with us. Now, in our survey, we give candidates the option to say, I will co-sponsor a bill or I will sponsor a bill. We're trying to find fighters for the Second Amendment. Everyone votes pro-gun when the bill's on the floor. The problem is getting the bill out of committee, onto the calendar, and onto the floor in the first place. For that, we need fighters. For that, we need people who will go to bat against their own caucus leaders most of the time and demand action on pro-gun bills. Dan Shaw said he would co-sponsor pro-gun bills, and we appreciate that, but that is not the same thing as saying that he would uh, sponsor or lead the fight for pro-gun bills. That's a difference you have to be aware of. Now, moving on with Dan Shaw, there's lots of dynamics involved in Jeff City right now, not just the Second Amendment. And as you guys know, the conservative caucus in the Senate is the reason why we have the Second Amendment Preservation Act. Rhino leaders in the Senate, like Caleb Rowden and everybody else, worked their tail off to kill SAPA law in 2021. It was the conservative caucus in that chamber who went to war against their own leaders and demanded a vote on SAPA law. If that conservative caucus had not done that, we never would have passed SAPA last year. It's a guarantee. So I have to say, we're very alarmed when we see Dan Shaw attacking the conservative caucus in the media. When we see him attacking the very guys who delivered the biggest expansion of gun rights here in Missouri history, it makes you wonder why. Because it's going to be the conservative caucus going forward who delivers more pro-gun victories for gun owners here in Missouri. But if they're being attacked by other Republicans, it makes it that much more difficult. And so again, you have to know that in Jefferson City, the conservative caucus is leading that fight. And for Dan Shaw to attack them publicly, that's a very big concern for us here at the Missouri Firearms Coalition. You should also know then, we're, and again, we're trying to find other ways besides a survey to verify who the pro-gun champion is. So in that context, you should also know that as far as we can determine, Dan Shaw has never filed a pro-gun bill in Jefferson City. And again, that doesn't make you evil, but we're trying to find leaders. We're trying to find champions. And for somebody who has been in office as long as he has, to have never filed a pro-gun bill, it's a concern to us. And you guys should be aware of that. 
The question then also being asked in Jeff City right now and in the district is, so if Dan Shaw gets elected, will he become part of the conservative caucus or will he join the Rhino caucus in Jeff City? Now, I realize we're getting away from gun politics, but we're not. Because again, the Rhino Caucus in Jeff City is an absolute enemy to gun owners. The Conservative Caucus in Jeff City are the ones who are filing and fighting for your gun rights every single day in Jeff City. And so when we see guys who claim to be pro-gun, who are then attacking that Conservative Caucus, it stands to reason they'll probably be a part of the Rhino Caucus in Jeff City. Now, any one of these three or four things is not the end of the world. But there's a lot of differences here between this candidate and other candidates, as you're about to see. And these differences are part of what you guys have to know to make your own best decision in this Republican Party primary. The question, of course, then is, is Dan Shaw's survey sincere? Is it backed up by his actions and by his deeds uh, in Jefferson City in the House? That's Dan Shaw. Moving on to Jeff Rorta. Jeff Rorta. Now, Jeff Rorta has been out of office for a long time in Jeff City. He spent eight years in the Missouri House a long time ago. And, and what you have to know about Jeff right off the bat is for those entire eight years, Jeff Rorta was a Democrat. I'm going to say it again. Jeff Rorta, for his entire eight years in the House, was a Democrat. Doesn't mean people can't change. But it's something you have to be aware of because that's a big difference between the candidates in this race. That's, that, you should ask him that. Why, you know, why were you that way? And why did you change? And how does that impact your view on our gun rights? It's an important question to ask him. But more importantly, since his time in the House in Jeff City, Jeff Rorta has been the leader of the St. Louis Police Department Union. Now, again, we're getting a little bit away from gun politics, but part of this, it's, it's all part of the story of who's going to best fight for gun rights in Jeff City. As you guys all know, the St. Louis PD has opposed every expansion of gun rights in Jeff City for forever. When we passed constitutional carry law in 2016 and stand your ground law and enhanced castle doctrine and SAPA and everything else that we've passed over the years, it's the St. Louis PD who has been loudly opposing this bill in the media and their lobbyists do so as well in the Capitol in Jeff City. Jeff Rorta has been the leader of that PD union for a very long time. Now, there could be reasons why it's a good thing, why he likes to be a part of that association and fighting for cops. That's, that's not the problem. But again, it's the St. Louis PD who has been the, the biggest opponent of our gun rights here in Missouri next to Michael Bloomberg. And we have never seen Jeff Rorta in all that time use his position to advocate for gun owners. We've never seen Jeff Rorta come out there and say, look, the St. Louis PD is wrong. The Second Amendment is important. Here's why. And I proudly support it as a gun owner here in Missouri. We haven't seen that from Jeff Rorta. That's a concern to us. Now, Jeff Rorta did survey 100%, different from Dan Shaw. He promised to uh, sponsor pro-gun bills. But again, the question is, does that jive with the rest of his actions, uh, both in office and since that time? And working for the loudest opponent to our gun rights in Missouri and never saying anything to counter that, that's a very big concern for us. It's also worthy of note for you guys that Jeff Rota is backed primarily by union money as a candidate. Now, again, we're not discussing the union issue. That's not, my, that's not our place here at the Missouri Firearms Coalition. But it is our place to tell you that labor unions, on our experience, have never backed a pro-gun candidate. I've never seen the labor unions here in Missouri give money to pro-gun candidates. In our experience, every time the AFL-CIO endorses a candidate, that's because that candidate is a radical leftist who will help advance a certain agenda set, and that never includes the Second Amendment. So why are they backing Jeff Rorta? Will he fight for gun rights or will he stab us in the back? That's a question you guys have to ask him. So again, he surveyed 
And we'll acknowledge that. But how does that jive with eight years as a Democrat? How does that jive with the leader of the biggest police union in the state whose parent entity has been attacking our gun rights relentlessly? I mean, hell, it's St. Louis PD who we're currently in federal court with trying to defend SAPA law. So how does that jive with Jeff's statements? And all the union money flooded into Jeff's campaign. Is that going to control him? Or is he going to actually, honestly, be able to keep his campaign promises if elected? Those are questions you guys have got to ask yourselves. And you have to, have to ask Jeff Rorta, are you sincere? You say you're pro-gun now, but your actions over the, over the long time here don't line up with that. So how do we know we can trust you? That's a question to ask Jeff Rorta. Then we have Mary Elizabeth Coleman. Mary Elizabeth Coleman. She's been in the House for a long time. And Mary Coleman was one of the candidates who surveyed 100%. That means that she's promised in writing to sponsor pro-gun bills, not just vote for pro-gun bills. As I mentioned, we're trying to find fighters. It's easy to vote pro-gun. It's harder, much, much harder to sponsor and lead the fight for gun rights here in Missouri. Mary has promised to do that. But again, so did Jeff. So how do we know who's telling the truth? Well, one of the ways you can look at this, very simply, if they're in office or have been, is have they sponsored pro-gun bills before, right? Mary Beth, Mary Elizabeth Coleman has done that just this year, she filed House Bill 2666. This bill dealt with repealing gun-free zones, expanding castle doctrine, and allowing for parking lot carry here in Missouri. It's a very big, comprehensive gun rights bill. It did not become law this year, but that was a big bill. And I'll tell you this too. A lot of times, we'll see candidates file a gun bill right before they announce a, another run for office just to check the box. Usually when that happens, that's a three paragraph or four paragraph bill that, that functionally or essentially does nothing, but allows them to say they're sponsoring pro-gun bills. This bill here, HB 2666, filed by Mary Coleman, is a 17 page long bill that addresses a bunch of substantive problems here in Missouri with gun-free zones, with castle doctrine, and with parking lot carrier, having, park, having your gun in a vehicle in a parking lot. This was not just a last minute fly-by-night bill. It's an impressive bill, you guys should be aware of that. More than that though, Mary Elizabeth Coleman fought for gun rights as a member of the General Laws Committee. Committee action is where all of the blood gets spilled these days in Jefferson City. If the bills move past committee, strong chance they're going to move onto the floor. It's getting past committee that's the problem. And in the General Laws Committee, we call it Gen Laws in Jeff City, in Gen Laws, Mary Beth Coleman fought hard for a variety of gun bills during that time in the legislature. And so that's also something you should know about her record. I'd finally mention as well, when it comes to Mary Elizabeth Coleman, the rhinos in Jeff City and across the state hate her. And as somebody who, who is, is honored to have the hatred of so many rhinos here in Missouri myself, we oftentimes look at people and say, who are their friends? More importantly these days, who are their enemies? And when we see people flocking with the rhino herd, that says something about them. When we see somebody who is hated by the rhinos, that also says something about them. And you should know, again, when it comes to Mary Elizabeth Coleman, the rhinos in Jeff City hate her. So, I told you guys it's going to be a unique video. All the candidates claim to be pro-gun. Hell, they've all surveyed with us in this race. That's important. But again, from there, the question you're asking us is, how do we know who to trust? And as you can see, we have distinct differences in the records and in the actions of these three candidates. You guys, as always, have to decide who you believe is the pro-gun candidate and who you're going to vote for. But when it comes to gun rights in this race, Mary Elizabeth Coleman has a history of fighting for gun rights in Jeff City, and that makes her candidate survey very believable. The other candidates have a variety of things that make their surveys harder to trust. I'll phrase it like that. From there, guys, do your own due diligence. Make your own decision. Help us out. Share our video far and wide. Facebook hates us. They throw these videos every day. Share it far and wide, guys, and join our fight today at www.joinmofc.com.